Hello, I'm Alan Fisher with the Planetary Science Institute here in Tucson. With me here is Don Davis, who worked on the Apollo 8, 10, 11, 12, and 13 missions and played a key role in devising a way to successfully bring the Apollo 13 astronauts safely back to Earth. Don, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, Alan. My pleasure. Don, what role did you play in the Apollo missions? For whom did you work and what exactly did you do? Well, I uh, was fortunate that when I finished up my degree here at the University of Arizona that the Apollo program was really taking off. So I applied, got a position in Houston working with TRW Systems. We were a contractor to the Manned Spacecraft Center, as it was called in those days. So I went to Houston and was the project manager for the team that developed the software that calculated all the maneuvers for bringing the Apollo spacecraft back to Earth successfully. Uh, we're, we're commemorating the 45th anniversary of man's first stepping on the moon. What was going through your mind when Neil Armstrong climbed down the ladder and actually set foot on the moon for the first time? Wow, that was the culmination of such an effort, such an endeavor that had gone on through. It had been a series of missions that were building up, you know, starting with the Apollo 8 mission, which was actually a reprogrammed mission. Apollo 8 originally was not going to go to the moon. It was just going to be a test mission combining the lunar module with the command and service module to be in an elliptical orbit around the Earth. But the limb was not ready. The Russians were breathing down our neck, and there was a terrible, terrible concern that the Russians were going to beat us to the moon. So that mission was reprogrammed, and it was to Apollo 8, which was the first time that humans left the gravitational field of the Earth, went, orbited the moon 10 times, came back to Earth. That then led up to the Apollo 11 lunar landing mission, which was the culmination of the goal, which met the goal that President Kennedy had set back in 1961 of landing a man safely on the moon and returning them to the Earth. That was an incredible moment, incredible moment for all of us working in that. And we just breathed an enormous sigh of relief. We had done it. And Don, did you know at that time that the historical import that this was this was going to be, you know, a man landing on the moon, was, was this um, seen as a, as a, as a history-changing event among uh, the people working there? It was. It certainly was. Once we could step back, you know, you're consumed with the day-to-day with the -day problems that you're dealing with, the codes not working, the answers are strange, but then periodically we would step back from that and say, wow, you know, we are part of an incredible adventure for all of humanity and we are so fortunate to be living at the time because we only leave the earth to our neighboring body once for the first time. What do you see as the role that the United States is going to play in manned space exploration moving ahead? Wow, you know, that's a $64 question. The United States, of course, has always been the leader since the early 1960s in the exploration with the human crewed exploration of space. And I see that the United States will continue to play a significant role in that into the future. What I would like to see, what I think we'll see, is that the cost and the challenges, say, of placing humans on Mars is going to be so expensive that no single nation can bear them. What I would like to see, which I think may well happen too, is that it could be a joint effort on behalf of all humanity to try to share resources, to pool expertise, to supply the funding necessary to do that, but the United States, I think, will be a leader. The International Space Station is an example of a very, very successful international cooperation, and perhaps that could be then the model that we could build upon as humans then spread from our native planet throughout the solar system and beyond. Do you have any prognostications as to when you expect man to first reach Mars? Oh, wow. <laughs> How much money do we have in the bank to do this, too? So NASA talks about perhaps sometime in the, in the 2030s. Uh, personally, I think that that's going to be quite optimistic. So personally, I would say sometime after 2050 might be the time in which humans would, would be um, on the surface of Mars. But that's just the first step, too. We also like to keep in mind that there's a lot of real estate out there in our solar system and beyond. And I think it's going to be to going to be ultimately the goal and the 
destiny of humanity to spread beyond this little cradle. After all, we've only had a technical civilization now for about 400 years. Think what will happen in the next 400, 800,000, 10,000 years, the mind boggles. Well, Don, thank you so much for joining us here today. My pleasure, Alan. Thank you.